Welcome everybody, Dark Hour 717 here. Today we're going to do a comparison of different controllers within Star Citizen. Mainly the difference between the HOTUS and the HOSIS. Before we get started, don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button, follow on Twitch, and check out our live stream every Tuesday, Thursday, and Sunday, 7 p.m. Eastern Time on both those platforms. Currently, we have a giveaway going through the end of March where you can win a Drake Cutlass Black with a Grey Cat Rock. To enter, just follow on Twitch or subscribe and comment on any video on YouTube. Do both of those, you get two entries, double your chances. Our current followers and subscribers only need to comment on any YouTube video for entry through the end of March 31st. And if you're new to Star Citizen, don't forget to use the referral code in the comments below to get an extra 5,000 AUEC when you sign up in the verse. For those not familiar with Star Citizen, it is a massive space MMO, has a huge amount of content to offer with new stuff coming in all the time. It's impressively immersive and it's an experience that I just can't describe is unbelievable. I highly recommend that if you appreciate a great space sim, that you check this one out, give it a try. You won't be sorry. Still in alpha, they're bringing new stuff in all the time between different ships, different locations, different job functions. But one thing they definitely do get done well is their control schemes. Control schemes that they offer are gonna be keyboard, mouse, gamepad, flight stick, HOTUS, and HOSIS. The default is going to be using your keyboard and mouse. This is very adequate and a huge number of citizens use this consistently and proficiently and are very, very good at it. The gamepad is another option though. I really discourage anybody from doing it. The availability to map appropriate controls and not have to continually remove your hand from the controller to use the keyboard makes it very inefficient and major pain in the backside, especially when you're in combat. There is one exception to this, and that's going to be the use of an Xbox Elite controller. With its extra functions and abilities, we have several org members that actually do this and do it very well. They swear by using a setup that we'll reference in our comments here by Couch Citizen, and that will help you maximize your efficiency and ability to play with that Elite controller gamepad. Another controller that is used is the Flight Stick. This will typically be a basic flight controller. It'll be on a weighted or non-weighted base with a simple lever or rotary dials and any number of additional buttons. A good example and popular choice for this is the Logitech 3D Extreme or the Thrustmaster T16000, but you can find numerous other options from lesser known manufacturers out there. These are great controllers. They do have a limitation in key binding though and do not allow for fully getting away from the keyboard for controlling your ship. Also, depending on the model, if it has a non-weighted base, it may require you keeping your hand on it to keep it down on the desk, which can be really a pain in the ass when you're trying to you know, fly your ship around. Today, we are going to focus on two popular methods for control, though, in the game, and that's going to be HOTUS, or your hands-on throttle and stick, and HOSIS, hands-on stick and stick. There's a lot of debate which of these two are the better option. They both offer immersive controls and setup capabilities. Now, what we will look at is not going to be the high-end items that range in price over the 450 US dollar area, but the more middle of the road, moderately priced versions. Several manufacturers are in this area, though the three that are most common are going to be Logitech, Thrustmaster, and VKB. And yes, VKB can get up into the crazy high price ranges, but they have models that start in the $300 area for a full setup. Specifically, we're going to look at the Logitech X52, X56, and VKB Gladiator systems. Thrustmaster is very popular with the T16000 model, though I do not have the opportunity to try this version out. They do come highly recommended though, and the T16000 model comes with the ability to be ambidextrous as well as can be configured as a HOTUS or as a HOSIS. Depending on the components that you get, it has a lot of flexibility. The T16000 is a very popular device with prices that start at approximately 120 US dollars for a single stick up to 350 US dollars for their flight pack which is going to give you a throttle, a stick, and a set of pedals. With the demand on these items having gone up over the last year, the prices have also increased especially on the used market and also purchase new you can have some delays in availability and shipping. So you might end up waiting a couple of weeks longer than, you know, just being able to order it and get it, uh, you know, Amazon Prime to you, you know. Links to the information on all the controllers I discussed will be in the comments below. So check those out and make an informed decision. 
Now me personally, I started out with a 3D Extreme Flight Stick from Logitech, but quickly moved up to the Logitech X52 due to the facts I mentioned before with not being able to completely get away from the keyboard. Now the X52 is an older model and is available in a standard setup or as a professional version. I use the standard myself. Once you go to the professional level, jumps up in price, but does have a cool black color to it over the baby blue that's kind of weird on the X52. The X52 is a more reasonably priced option though. New you can get this starting at approximately 270 US dollars and used at about 150 US dollars over on eBay. It has three mode selections that with a total of 282 programmable functions, using those modes gives you almost an unlimited ability to be configured in almost any way. Be aware the source you get it from because there are some common problems that these had with wear and tear, especially with some buttons and switches becoming very sticky or unresponsive. The X52 does make a great entry level HOTUS with the multifunction capabilities and a very natural feel to it. The flight stick is responsive though. You want to make sure you have the Logitech application to configure the dead zones and calibrate it appropriately and go back and recalibrate often. Another downfall on this is the stick connects to the throttle through a serial port versus its own independent USB connection, which means you're not able to set up as two sticks independently for a hostess setup, but the Logitechs from what I found are not ambidextrous to begin with, so they're only available as right-handed. I used this model for quite a while before I moved up to the X56 model. Now the X56 takes the control scheme to a whole nother level. Its design and style is absolutely amazing. New, these are currently priced right around the 400 US dollar range, which is higher than when I got mine, but used refurbished can be found in the 250 US dollar range and above. The X56 is packed with a load of additional features, including the same three mode availability, LED lighting, an analog mini stick at the thumb position on the flight stick, and more buttons and switches than you'll ever know what to do with. This is a definite step up and offered a lot of customization and control and was very immersive in its use. Using desk mounts meant that the X56 was very comfortable and I became very proficient quickly with it. The addition of the mini analog stick allowed to use the straight function with the same hand using my thumb to move multiple directions at the same time. The level of control and immersion on a HOTUS is far and above what I had on the keyboard and introduced a whole nother level of flying in the game. It truly is a game changer and the coordination between the throttle and the stick was very natural and easy to adjust to with a variety of buttons and switches at my fingertips simplified every function in the game. The controls over speed, weapons and drive systems including mining lasers and scanning all improved greatly and I was not needing to go to the keyboard as often if at all. Every aspect of control in the game to do with flight improved for me personally. One downfall though is even though the X56 works off two independent USB connections, the lack of ambidextrous use takes away the ability of using it in a dual stick configuration, which is a benefit that the Thrustmaster T16000 has over the Logitech for sure. Then there's the option to use a dual stick configuration or HOSA setup. Thrustmaster has a T16000 setup that can fill this desire, but another option that is competitively priced is the VKB controllers. Specifically, the Gladiator model they have available in a standard as well as a premium version. The prices for the standard are $120 per flight stick and a premium is $150 per flight stick. Both come with a modular base. The premium offers additional four-way stick at the thumb and an additional rapid fire trigger and additional replacement springs, tools, and accessories along with it. It's definitely something that's well worth the upcharge for the $30. You get much more functionality and also more items to help maintain them. Setup, not including key binding in game, really was less than 10 minutes. When flying with the hostess setup, I found it introduced an additional level of control in the fact that I could utilize a second stick for functions such as strafing in multiple directions and introduced all new capabilities and attack angles over using the thumb mini stick that was on the X56. The ability to also rely on the second stick to stop all thrust upon release also meant the issue of not centering or pulling the throttle all the way back no longer existed, guaranteeing my ship came to a zero thrust position. In changing to this setup, I found that adapting to the difference was very quick and really has its own natural feel to the controls. 
With the availability of multiple programmable buttons, it still retained the capability of removing interaction with the keyboard while flying. After just a few practice sessions, I did find that there was an improved combat and maneuvering capability that the HOTIS couldn't offer. I found that the comfort was nearly identical to the HOTIS, but overall control was more immersive. The HOSIS, at least with the VKBs, did also offer the ability to keep everything I needed right at my fingertips. Flight with the HOSIS for other functions in game also improved in landing as well as low level flight. Don't get me wrong, if you go HOSIS, you're not going to turn into Tom Cruise from Top Gun and be an ace pilot overnight. Your own skills and capabilities will play a major factor into what you can do with these devices. But fine movement control, I find, became a bit easier, and for the price being the same, I would say that for me, the Hostess definitely wins out over the HOTUS. It just gives you that little extra bit that's well worth it. Overall, when choosing a controller, whether it's keyboard and mouse, gamepad, HOTUS, or Hostess, the only matter is your personal comfort. If moving to a HOTUS or Hostess is completely new to you, there are a lot more options out there from less well-known manufacturers that can give you an entry-level experience at a lower cost. And if you find you enjoy it, then absolutely always move up to one of the mid-level or higher-end setups. For me personally, I find that I do prefer the Hostess setup over the HOTUS, and I'm planning on sticking with the VKBs. I hope that this information was useful for everybody, and don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button and follow on Twitch. Also catch our live streams every Tuesday, Thursday, and Sunday night at 7 p.m. Eastern Time. Come check out Amrock's Fang, and if it's an org you feel you would like to join, then throw us an application. Link is in the comments below, and for those that would like to support us, check out our Patreon page as well as the merch store. It all goes back to supporting our giveaways that we give back to all of the viewers. And get your entries in for that March giveaway, a Drake Cutlass Black with a Grey Cat Rock. We'll be taking those entries through the end of March 31st and a winner will be drawn on April 1st. Just follow on Twitch or subscribe on YouTube and leave a comment on any video through the end of March. Thanks again and we will catch you next time.